standing in respect of God's word and prayer time tonight. Jesus is very near. I love that song, don't you? I think of Matthew's gospel, chapter number 18, what it says, where two or three gather together in my name, there am I in the midst, right in the middle of what we're doing. And uh, forgive me, I, I was announcing Master's Club, but they hadn't started yet. So uh, that's an oversight on my part. I thought it was tonight. I saw the, uh, the vest, and I was getting really excited myself. And I was wanting to go uh, and be a part of that. But anyway, that's another story. You can laugh right there. Okay. Let's turn to our companion text tonight. Let's go over to the book of 1 Peter. We're in Bible study. Is it all right? We have a Bible study. The Bible says in chapter number 5, the book of 1 Peter, verse number 7 through 9, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. How many believe all the Bible? Amen, brother. Be sober. Let me tell you why he cares for you, because he knows you're under attack. He knows you have failures. He knows you have pitfalls. He knows the deceiver is trying to get you to doubt, be discouraged, be depressed. So he says in lieu of that, he's caring for you. Cast your care, all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. Again, let me ask the question again. How many believe in the whole Bible? How many believe in a real live devil? Start doing something for the Lord or doing something good, you'll see him. Notice it says, as a roaring lion walking about. Sounds like he's making a lot of noise. Seeking whom he made a vow. Notice what it says to us as God's people to resist steadfast in faith. The just shall live by what? By his feelings, by his emotions, by his roller scope, a roller coaster, dramatic emotions? No. Christian life ought to be the most stable life there is. We, we're uh, war uh, weary. Amen. We're war hardened. And we endure hardness as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're to resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Praise the Lord. We're to resist. Resist is not a passive term. Resist is a military term. And it means to fight. It means to stand. It means to uh, go on, if you will, the offensive instead of the defensive. So Satan is as a roaring lion. He uses fear. He uses tactics. He uses deception. He uses subtlety. And so we understand who he is. I'm sorry to have to bring him to uh, your attention tonight, but that, I'm just obeying the Lord. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. The Lord said he's the devil that deceived him. This is When I get to this verse in the Revelation, when I'm reading this verse, I get some kind of excited. Notice again in our text in chapter 20 of the book of Revelation, the devil that deceived them. It's talking about all of us human beings here on the planet. How long has he been deceiving us? He's been studying human nature a long time and he knows us. He knows where we're weak. He knows our vulnerable points and yet he's still deceiving us. He's a little smarter than we are. He's, he's a little more crafty. And this Bible says that uh, the, the one who has been deceiving us, somebody don't get too happy here now, says that he was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Okay. And when I read that verse in the Bible, I forget about all my worries because he is the number one worry. Right. Amen. When he's out of the picture, um, it's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. Right. He's as a roaring lion. So he's troubling up our life. He's, he's muddying up our streams. He's causing difficulties. He's causing all kind of hardships and mayhem here in this old sinful world because he's the little G God of this world. Listen to this. I was speaking to someone tonight on visitation. And uh, needless to say, I have to mention to them, I, I know about your 144,000 you're all hung up on. I said, uh, 
And, and I respect that. I said, ma'am, this is America. You can believe what you want. But I said, I want you to ask your church one question. Is Jesus Christ the brother of Satan? I said, you got him. I said, if they say he is, I said, he's an archangel. He is not like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to use him as his footstool one day. That's right. They're not brothers. That's right. Read Hebrews chapter 1. We just said it on that last Sunday night. If you were here, you know that, that God has highly exalted him uh, above us and above the angels. And one day, uh, he's going to be crowned king of kings and lord of lords. And the angels are not going to be preferred over Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord. She didn't have much to say after that. So we're not to wish these that are preaching another gospel. We're not to even wish them God's speed because the very place they're trying to deny so desperately perhaps might be their final destination. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing to say, Preacher, uh, aren't we supposed to witness to it? And the best I knew how I was trying to get through to her. The best I knew how I was trying to get through to her. Because if, they, if there's religions that teach that there is only so many going to heaven, the rest of us are going to have to live out here. And I asked him one time, I said, Sir, are you trying to tell me that all of my life, my adult life, I have spent trying to get people to heaven? And you're saying you're trying to keep people here on earth. He said, that's exactly right. That's what I believe. I said, we're, we're not at the same. Um, I, I just started quoting John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. We also may my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, a literal place, he said, I will return. He said, I will return unto you again, receive you to myself, and where I am, there you may be also. Amen. So I believe the Bible. Yes. I believe there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I believe you're either saved or lost. There's some Christians I'm wondering about. Forgive me. I'm concerned as a pastor. I don't know their heart. I don't know their soul. But at least I can say this. They're carnal Christians if they are a Christian. But you know the word Christian, hold on just a minute, means Christ-like. At least as a pastor, I'm concerned for their soul. Maybe they have had religion. I don't know. Maybe they have a profession but no possession. I know old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming. That doesn't mean you're perfect. But there's a change in your life. What a change. What's the old song? Since Jesus come into my heart. I believe there's been a change. I will say first of all tonight, whatever deception or doubt or destruction Satan brought upon the earth, the unholy trinity, notice this, will be rounded up and thrown, it says, into the lake of fire. Let's study that verse out just a minute. Notice it says in verse number 10 again, the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone. Notice this, comma, did you see this? Where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented. I like this part. He's going to get, he's got payday coming. Right. Amen? Right. He knoweth that he hath a short time. Why do you think he's giving you so much trouble? Why in the world do you think that he's running loose in this world and he's deceiving so many tonight? I'll tell you why, because he knows that he has a short time and he knows he's going to be tormented and there the unholy trinity will be the beast, the false prophet, and the devil himself. So as much as there is a holy trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, there's a devil who appears in the flesh like we would see him, and then there's the, the, uh, the false prophet and the beast that beast right there might be the World Wide Web. Who knows? We don't know. I know this. They'll be worshiping the beast. Have you read the Revelation? Seems like that's all people can think about today. But I know this. My grace, he said, will be sufficient for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, sometimes I just feel I, I was preaching in the prisons five years of my life. And I, I was in a prison over in Albania. Have you ever been in a room where you just feel pure evil? I was there with some of the most heinous sinners in the world, murderers. 
villains, sex fiends. Believe it or not, did you know God can save anyone He wants to? That's right. right. I mean, God can have mercy on who He will have mercy upon. Right. And how does He do that? And why does He do that for Christ's sake? He does it. That's right. If you call out on the name of Jesus Christ, old things are passed away, amen? There was a lady there by the name of Hope Show. Her name was Hope Show. She was the dictator's wife that had, uh, in this totalitarian, I can't pronounce the word. Totalitarian. totalitarian. Thank you, Brother James. Couldn't get my words up. The tongue tied up here. This lady wanted to be saved. I preached to her about three different times. She didn't think that God would forgive her for what her, her and her husband had done to the people of Albania. They had done some heinous crimes against these people. You did, did you know when you were in Albania, if you were caught with a Bible, I'm talking about during the communist regime, they, they would shoot you on sight. They hated God. They hated His Word. I wonder why that is an atheist who claimed to be atheist. Where's Bob tonight? He's my number one amen corner back there. I think he has uh, tendonitis or something. Come on. If an atheist says, he gets all upset because you're propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ and you're carrying Bibles around. What are they getting upset about if there is my God? That's right. Something's wrong with that. They're thinking, isn't it? That just lets you know that there is something to it. They don't get upset when Cinderella loses her glass slipper. They don't get upset when Frosty melts because they know it's not true. They get upset because they know that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. And they are choosing not to believe. Amen. That's the problem. So I preached three different times for this dear lady. And each time a steady stream of tears were flowing. Emotions were uh, happening. And I wish tears could save people. I really wish tears could save people. Did you know emotions can't save? I've seen some people, they can turn it on and turn it off. I've seen so many hundreds right down here. There, there are stains on this altar where people have cried tears. And, and I don't discount tears because, you know, God can touch your heart. That's great. That's wonderful. And it happens to me every week of the world. I'm a very emotional man. But emotions in and of themselves is not salvation. Did you know and understand this verse in the Bible where it says he saw, saw repentance carefully with tears but did not find True God is sorrow or repentance. That's right. Amen. In Romans chapter 9, speaking of Esau, listen to this verse in 9 and 13 of Romans. Here we are in Bible study night. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What does that mean? Who does God hate? Well, Esau was not hated because of his sin. Esau was hated because he didn't know how to deal with his sin. He didn't know how to turn from his sin and turn to God. And thus, you're talking about the wrath of God. You're talking about that fire and brimstone that the devil is going to face one day. That's what you're going to face one day if you reject Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's right. So God's love, the love that he would have had for you and could have had for you, it's turned something totally opposite, different than love. It's perfect hatred. And boy, when God hates, he hates. That's right. Yes. That's how you know. Listen, there's only one sin that will send you to hell. That's the sin of unbelief. That's right. The rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sin of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit of God. For that, you go to hell. Right. There's, no, there, there's no remedy. Yeah. There's no second chances. I mean, uh, the sin of rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ is like worse than the Roman guard who hung Jesus. You're just as guilty of those people who hung him on the cross. That's right. So every other sin can get forgiveness. Your sin tonight, some of you here tonight say, Pastor, I've been too mean, I've been too honoring, I've been too ugly, I've been too sinful. Not for God. That's right. He can forgive you. Amen. I said, my God can forgive you. Amen. As you know, Satan is so deceptive, though, he'll get you believing all those lies. He's the father of all lies. You right, can't ride over on your shoulder and tell you how wicked you are and how condemned you should be and feel and keep you out of heaven and say you're not good enough and you're not worthy enough to go to that church and hear that preacher and participate in their worship time. God help us. That's right. 
You know, if it weren't for the grace of God tonight, none of us would be here. That's right. None of us would be here. So I don't know where you are, and I don't know where you come from, I don't know how far you've gone into sin. I deal with people on a daily basis who are caught up in sin. Daily. They want answers. They want to know why. Uh, after being in prison, their, uh, their wives uh, won't come back to them and their children won't hate them anymore. I talked to a lady at the door tonight and her husband's in there for about the fifth time in a row. This time the district attorney spoke up and said he's got Jesus Christ wants to deliver you out of your sinful condition. I said sinful. We're all sinful. Did you know he can? Did you know he has all power? Amen? Amen. Did you know that Satan will destroy you with decisions that you make? You can't blame him. He tempts you with it like a little puppet. He, he puts a carrot out in front of you and he he knows your weak nature. He knows where you're, you would yield. And he knows how to make you uh, succumb. But you have to ultimately make the decision. And he is very deceptive now. But you alone will destroy yourself with the decisions that you make. Okay. I know what you're saying. Especially our young people. They make this statement all the time. I've memorized everything they said. We run a Christian school here. I've heard it all. Well, everyone else is doing it. Yeah. That's right. Everyone goes to rock concerts. Everyone's smoking spice. I expelled one boy one day, and he was in his senior year. And just weeks before graduation, I expelled him. He hasn't forgiven me yet. And I told him here recently, he got in touch with me and he said, Pastor, I'm still angry and bitter towards you for doing that. I said, if you did it again, I would do it again. I said, because they've proven so many people have died by just one inhalation. Amen. To take one of that, one drag off of one of those, whatever they are, spice smokers. We have guidelines we have to go by. Uh, this is not anarchy here. This is not the inmates running the institution. Yeah. Well, everyone reads Harry Potter. Let me burst your bubble. Did you know that there are, believe it or not, listen to this. Read what the Bible says about it. That's right. Read what the Bible says about all this demonic spirits and these oppressing spirits. Read, read what happened to Saul when he went to the witch at Endor. By the way, all this uh, astro astrological signs of the devil. That's right. Tell Gene Dixon I said so. That's right. He didn't think he was going to get a full-fledged message tonight. Come on. Come on. Well, Pastor, if my children go down to the library and are taught by transgender people, it won't hurt anything. Everyone else is doing it. Mm -hmm. mm. Cross-dressers are going to teach our children no. at the public libraries now. You know, it's a trend. It's all over America. Well, we are living in the last of the last days. Can't you see the handwriting on the wall? I mean, if you can, look, if a preacher has a problem, if he can't preach on some, against something today, he he got no preach in it. I met a man out on the street tonight. <clears throat> he said, Thank you, Pastor. 17 years ago, you and Brother Forrest came to my door, knocked on my door, wanted me to Christ. Here's the rest. Shackles that bind me. How in the world? 
Here's what I would suggest. I'd find a soul winning, I don't care if it's this one or another one. I'd find a red hot soul winning church and I'd go every time the doors swing back there, I'd be walking through it. That's right. That serious. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. That's right. Son, he's after our homes. That's right. That unholy trinity, they know. I don't know how they work and how they operate. If they work in unison, I don't know how they do it. I don't know if all those little imps and... Secondly, I want to say this. Whatever deception that Satan brought upon the earth, it was worthy of torment. And notice, not just for a little while, but forever and ever. If you'll read Revelation chapter number 17, 18, and 19 in your home readings, would you be so wise as to do that? Because the Bible says that you're blessed by the reading and the keeping of this sacred book of Revelation. Nobody wants to read it, however, because it is it will scare the socks off of you. Am I right or wrong? Right. right. We find out through 17, 18, and 19 of the book of Revelation that it's through spiritual deception that Satan, uh, he would, the Bible says that even the very elect, if possible, would be deceived. We're talking about religion. after the message, I feel as if it's Rome. Now, who sh whoever she is, she's, she has shed, the, uh, the scripture tells us, the blood of the prophets and wherever her headquarters are on the planet, it has seven hills around it. I've read the book. You have too. Whoever it is, I I heard another voice from heaven, it says, in Revelation 18, saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not a partaker of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Now, what does that say? If God is, re is remembering the iniquities of Jezebel or Babylon, the spiritual whore, And it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every fowl. And after this, after this, you'll find that there's rejoicing in heaven, chapter number 19. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the whole earth. 
with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. The true church of Jesus Christ has never been a part I wouldn't name it, but you'd probably get offended. She's been sending her little army out to do her bidding since the Inquisition on. She has the kings of the earth the seed, and many nations on the earth have a state religion. Did you know some states, some, uh, some countries like Germany, have the tithe automatically deducted from your check? And it goes to either one of the two state churches. And you can figure out who that is online if you want to Google it. But let me tell you what the German people are upset about. They're upset about that it. it's not voluntary anymore. It's mandated hit by the state. Because they believe in a state. believes or speaks about or preaches from the pulpit, I believe that someone within the, the, the confines of those churches that are false churches, they read the Bible on their own and they can truly be born again Christians. Thank God for His power and grace tonight. But I want to say this, those that have been deceived, it says that their smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Did you read that? That means it's eternal. There's no way for them to get out on a parole. There's no pardon uh, from the governor. There is no, there's no remedy in sight. And the problem being, we've got to warn people. I could feel my wife get a little tense when I told that lady, the Bible says there's an innumerable number in heaven, not just 100. I could feel my wife clench. It's our duty to warn people. Did you know what the Bible says? If we fail to warn the wicked from the air of the way, their blood will be on our hands. Amen. That's right. We've got to warn people. That's right. Brother Terry, I want to congratulate you, sir. On Sunday, one of my dear friends here in our county was here for the first time. Amen. He said he had never made a public profession of If Brother Bob was here, he would say amen right there. Whatever deception that Satan has done cannot be described by a Baptist preacher. Let's look in chapter 19 again, verse 2 and 3. The true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great war. Excuse me. Let's go to chapter 20, verses 1. We, we covered that. Thank you. I don't know if I can say that word, but it's in the Bible. Chapter 20, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, comma, which is the devil. Would you underline that word? 
you better know him, and you, you have better study your enemy. You better know his tactics. You better know who he is. You better know him coming down the road a long ways off. You know why? Most people, if they knew the true consequences of their sin, they would never get involved. Moses says, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and Lake of fire. The Bible calls Satan. He calls him that old serpent. <laughs> How do you like to hold snakes? I, I see some people taking their pictures with them around their necks and such. Not me, not this blonde headed preacher. <laughs> this young blonde headed preacher. I like that word young. I'm getting younger. I'm eternal, by the way. That's right. Amen. Amen. Johnny Pope once, uh, he, he spoke to me, he said, Preacher, he said, I, I can't see the end of the tunnel, but I can see the light. He said, I can see it in the distance. It's coming up. I said, Brother Johnny, what are you worried about? You're eternal. You're going to live forever. And he will. And you will too if you're saved. That's right. Satan is cold and calculating and careless, especially with human life. Have you ever noticed how he cares nothing about our life? That's right. He, he doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't care about you. Why, why would we lean upon him anyway? Why would we go to the chair? I was out visiting today, and there was a sign out there right in the middle of the meeting, and it said, Tarot card, Paul Reader. Like they didn't do any good. Go back and read what happened to Saul because he went to the witch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Better be careful. Satan's a deceiver. Well, I can't get my answers from God. What am I supposed to do, Pastor? You better not go to him or her. It's usually a her. Excuse me. Ladies, I'm sorry. I'm not calling you a witch tonight. <laughs> now, if you're a person, listen, if you're a person that believes your platform, your party platform, believes in taking human life, you're siding with the devil's crowd. That's right. Amen. Hey, would you please not call yourself a Christian if you're voting for that? That's right. That's right. Dan Carr Jr. would love me for saying that. The Bible says, come out from among them and from this wickedness. Praise the Lord. We're supposed to come out from among the world and be separate, saith the Lord. Oh, by the way, all those countries over here, if I told you about where the spiritual vacuum is, if you think it's bad here, I was over in England this last summer, and I'm telling you, it's the most wicked place, and he is a uh, horrible place I've ever been in my life. I hate to tell you, in, in church, it makes a company, but it is a Wednesday night, and all the children are out here. I was propositioned on the streets of England. It's bad over there. Wow. That's our mother country. Are you praying for? We got a member over there. She, he sends his tithes every month. He said, Richard, there's not any churches over here. What am I supposed to do? I keep asking the missionaries to call them, and they won't do it. Sin will take you farther you want to go. And keep you longer you want to stay. Cost you more than you want to pay. His wife left him. They have a child together. He watches our messages online. He said, that's my church. I'm going to listen to my preacher. I'm going to send my tithe. To Is it okay if we get tithes from England? Amen. It might be a, a hidden meaning in all of that. It might be there's someone sitting out here in your blessed assurance that needs to go to England and preach the word of God and nothing else get on the street and preach. All those millions of people, they know there's over two million of their boys that died in World War II. And I don't know, or World War I, I don't know how many in World War II. And all the while, the spiritual vacuum that's in our mother country over there. I'm thinking now of all these Muslims and Islamic people are moving into these churches that are disbanding and they're making uh, these mosques out of them. And you can hear the chants as they call for prayer. Every day. You see what happens when a country turns their back on God? God will allow that. You see, Amen. Satan one day will deceive the nations no more. When I was in our mission field of Romania, one of our president's wives came to that country. She was coming over there in the name of promoting safe sex. Of course, she was promoting abortion. 
and she promised the state and the country of Romania if they would go along with her program that she would give tens of millions of dollars to them if they would only teach her program in their public schools. What's wrong with God's program, abstinence? What's wrong with having the Holy Bible? They wouldn't let us preach the Bible in Romania. But I promise you, in Russia, we were allowed to go in. Just across the border. They were asking us to come in. I asked our superintendent, Mr. Orange, I don't think he's a superintendent anymore. When I first came here, I knocked on his door. I went two or three times, and I, I sit down in front of him. I said, Mr. Orange, let us come into the schools and have some sort of Bible club, some kind of preaching service to warn these young people about what's out there and the subculture that's in our city right now, drugs and alcohol, and illicit sex. He said, Pastor, I, I hear what you're saying, but... It's against the policy. We can't do it. I'm so sorry. He was very, very cordial. He was very kind. He was very cold all at the same time. I hope he's listening. He's a Christian. The blood of the innocents are going to be on our hands one day. It ain't going to be on this preacher's hands. Page two. Here's the rest of the story. Oh, I will say about four years ago, they called us. I said, Pastor, we remember you coming. We need you to come. <laughs> we need you to come. I said, Johnny has a missionary to the public schools. By the way, he's continuing that ministry where he's at in Indiana. He has a high school just next door to him. And he's able to go two days a week over there at the public high school. And then they, the junior high school found out about it and said, Pastor Johnny, they all call him Pastor Johnny. We'll tell you, he walks into the sheriff's office. He walks into the mayor's office. He walks into... Uh, you, these, uh, you know, these, these people of prominence, and uh, they all call him Pastor Johnny. Come on in, Pastor Johnny. They roll out the red carpet for Pastor Johnny. <laughs> oh, by the way, he had a four hundred thousand dollar blessing today. He got hit with hail, and the insurance company's gonna pay the whole kit for They're gonna get new roof, new shingles. Brother Lanning, you helped him with that. Thank you for that, sir. He he loved your advice on that. He said, "You know, Dad. He said there's some more things around here that need to be done." <laughs> He said, but I don't have Richard Latin in our church. I know, son. Go ahead and do it anyway. You can do it. Just call him up on the phone. I said, call In the name of Jesus. Excuse me, I didn't come to church to be entertained. I come to church to have an encounter with my holy God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. How is it that a whole generation of people have been deceived in believing that what they do on Sunday with this is something spiritual? It's hippified if you want to know the truth. That's right. I know where it started. It started back in the early 80s, mid-80s, with soundtracks coming into the church, accompaniment tapes. And it was so simple. It was so innocent. It was wonderful. It added a new complexion to the churches, and there wasn't anything demonic about it, much like the Beatles. You know, they started so so cute, so innocent, straight bangs, suits, almost looked, de almost looked decent. I know. You're going to throw darts at me on the way home. That's all right. Let me tell you the rest of that, that story. You know the rest of it. They ended up Hindu. And we got a whole generation going to India with backpacks on. I saw them when I was over there doing missionary work. They ended up being drug pushers and drug fiends. Amen. And they led a whole nation, a sexual revolution. I said they led a whole generation away from God. Yeah. That's what's wrong with them. That's right. I'm going to keep preaching against them. By the way, Mr. John Lennon, he said that we're more popular, are you listening, than Jesus Christ. Ask him how popular he is now. Jesus is alive and he's not. Amen. If I'm not mistaken, he got shot in the back a couple, two or three times. 
Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I shall repay. Amen. That's right. Forgive me. But you better be careful. Be not deceived. God is not more for whatsoever man soweth, that shall be also. Right. That's right. You better not talk about my Lord in a, in a derogatory fashion. Amen. You better not claim to be more popular than Jesus Christ. That's right. After you're gone, we won't remember you. I knew it might get a little heavy. heavy. Let me tell you why I'm going through all this process is because I want you to understand, I don't want you to have rose-colored glasses. I don't want you to look Jesus Christ in the face one day and say, hey, you know, Pastor, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't hear you ever say anything about warning my young people about this, that, or the other. It's my job as your pastor to warn you, and every now and then I have to come out with a warning message. Is that all right? Amen. Sure. Yes. If it's not all right, we're going to keep on doing it anyway. That's right. Amen. I know people who are trapped in these kind of environments. I'm talking about spiritual environments, supposedly, quote, unquote, because of family, because of grandchildren, because grandpa's out in the cemetery, they won't leave. Here's my message and my charge and my challenge for these people who are locked into one of these situations. Go dig Grandpa up out of the graveyard and take him with you. It's not worth it staying there and watching your family come unraveled at the seams. I love you and you're good people. But you know you're sheep and sheep need leading. And sheep, forgive me, the Bible said we're sheep, am I right? Yes. Sheep can do dumb things. Right. Stop listening to long-haired hippie music. It leads down a destructive road. Amen. Turn on some Christian music. If you're a Christian, I said turn on some Christian music. Amen. If you can't listen to anything but the wrong kind of music, turn it all off. We're on a 90 day fast right now. How's That's everybody right. doing? Doing good. Thank you, preacher. Thank you. Did you see and understand that between now and the rapture, if we get caught in one of these traps, we will be forever trying to unravel ourselves out of it until the rapture of Jesus Christ and then we'll have to stand before him and we'll give an account for these things. I said Christians will give an account for our works. Amen. I said we need to keep our young people pure. Amen. I say we need to quit taking them down to the casinos and let them see the beach boys. That's right. well, what's wrong with the beach boys? I can tell you what's wrong with them. You might have heard of Charlie Manson. He had 666 out of here on the forehead. Hello. Did anybody know that he was a rock and roll singer? Did anybody know that the Beach Boys got him to write lyrics for a lot of their songs? Did anybody know that he not only wrote songs under the influence of drugs, influence of LSD and other hallucinative drugs, but he did some other things. And he influenced some people to murder some people That's right. under the influence. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. It's all there. Mr. David Bowie made this statement about rock music. You say you cannot separate drugs and the devil and rock music. You can't separate. It's all together. It's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's all together. It's Satan's device. You can't preach against the devil without preaching against music. David Bowie made this statement. He's somewhere. I hope he's with God. He said, everybody knows that rock music is the devil's music. That's right. He got rich doing it. You all know. Everybody knows. If everybody knows, then why are we humming their tunes? Why are we singing the devil's songs? Why are we going down through the grocery store, skipping to their beat? I say, if you have to, uh, wear earplugs. If you have to, go online and order it and have them deliver it. 
Walmart does that. They do that here in Mississippi. I know in Alabama, they're, 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 Walmart is delivering. Has that happened in Mississippi yet? We're always last. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just telling you that the drug culture, you can, you can fill in the blank. The drug culture is synonymous, fill in the blank. It's D-E-V-I-L. When you see drugs, are you with me? I'm almost done. You're talking about pure devil. Pure, it's one of his devices. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. The drug culture is stealing the minds and the hearts of our young and old. Now what are we going to do? Are we going to be deceived by this? Let's go to two verses and I'm done. Revelation chapter 21. Have we had fun tonight? Yes. Have we learned anything? Yes. This preacher just been up here beating the air. Revelation chapter number 21 with the fearful, verse number 8, and the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers. Underline the word sorcerer. It's okay to write in your Bible. Right out beside that in the flyleaf of your Bible, put pharmacy, pharmakia in the Greek word. It is a drug addicted person. You got it? And idolaters and all liars, look out for those habitual liars. Notice it says common. Notice he put the liars in there with all those other people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God help us. Do y'all have to deal with them? Yes, sir. Woo! Let me tell you a spin, won't they? They shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, right in there with the devil, which is the second death. That means they're going to the bad place. Amen. It's not purgatory either, by the way. One more verse. It's going to be forever and ever and ever. Not just for a little while. Purgatory has its meaning or Hades. In the new versions of the Bible, it has Hades a lot instead of hell. Get rid of that Bible. That's it's right. not a Bible. You need a Bible that says hell in there. Because we know the difference between hell and what uh, the perception of the word and the term Hades is is two totally uh, entirely different words. Let's look at 22 and 15, the book of Revelation. 22 and 15. Notice it says again. For without the, our dogs and sorcerers. What does that word mean again? Somebody help me. Drug addicted. It means a drug addicted person. And whoremongers, here's the fleshly adulterers. And murderers and idolaters, here are the spiritual adulterers, people who go to church every Sunday. The distance between their head and their heart. And whosoever loveth and maketh life. That almost sounds identical to 21 and 8 of Revelation. Am I saying that right? Pretty close, huh? Oh my God, within two chapters, would put the word drug addicted person. I know there's people that do it one time or they get in a party and they're enticed to do some of this or some of that or the other and they don't have a, a lifestyle. They don't have an habitual practice of it. But a Christian, a born again Christian has power and authority over that. Satan cannot hold them in that trap because they have the blood of Jesus Christ. They have the spirit of God living in them. 